Today's deep cut is Creep from 2004, the British and German horror movie directed by Christopher Smith, who went on to direct Severance and Triangle. The film stars Franca Potente, Sean Harris, and Vass Blackwood. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, this is Mike from Fearshop.com. Today we're talking about 2004's Creep by Christopher Smith. Before we get into the video, make sure you like this video. Trust me, you're going to love the video, so give me that thumbs up, please. Uh, make sure you're leaving your comments. Love to hear what your thoughts are. Also, make sure you're subscribed. Definitely means a lot to hear back from everybody, so let's keep that love going. All right, so today we're into the Deep Cut series, and we're talking about 2004's Creep by Christopher Smith. Most everybody's heard of Creep from 2014, the low-budget darling from director Patrick Bryce spawned a hell of a sequel. But Creep 2004 is definitely more of an underground, underrated horror movie. Heading home late one night after a party, Kate falls asleep while waiting for her train. She awakens to find herself trapped in the London underground, with all the doors locked for the evening. While being attacked by a co-worker who has followed her, a mysterious unseen creature drags him away and kills him. This begins a terrifying ordeal as Kate and a young homeless couple are stalked through the dark tunnels by something dangerous with payback on its mind. So you watch this movie, the opening scenes remind you of Midnight Me Train, right? Probably a film that we'll also be doing in this deep cut series as well. But keep in mind, Midnight Me Train came out four years later. Even though it was based on a book from the 80s, the movie itself didn't really come out until 2008. Majority of us didn't even see it till 2009. But Creep from 2004, you know, it's just one of those movies that I can't believe that a lot of people miss. And I can't believe there's not so many people talking about it, right? There's, there's some oddities in the movie. I mean, I get that the girl's tired, but falling asleep like a few minutes before the last train seems like a far-fetched idea. Yeah, you know, I've, I've fallen asleep on trains before. I don't know if I've fallen asleep on a platform, but whatever. Uh, on top of that, train does end up coming and she gets on it, even though, you know, there shouldn't have been a train there, but whatever. Uh, all of a sudden, she runs into a work friend who she hates and he tries to rape her. Like, what is he doing on a train that nobody else seems to know about? Again, far fetched, but I digress. She was going to meet George Clooney, you know, just just odd part of the story, but whatever. You know, again, I digress. I want to get into why this movie is featured as a deep cut. I mean, obviously, I have to like this one quite a bit, right? The, the beginning of the film has this scary sense of isolation, intense fear. There's no bells and whistles, right? It's just suspense. It's just fear. There's not a ton of lengthy exposition or wordy backstory. It's just suspense. You know, we love our suspense movies, whether it's talking about films like Halloween or something like that. Just pure suspense, and we love it. Uh, Catherine Gilfeather, who plays, you know, a character simply titled Girl, actually has no other credits to her name. Very odd. She carries the film for the most part. She meets people along the way. First, it's Guy, his real name, but that's an actual name, uh, who tries to rape her. Then the homeless couple who try to help the security supervisor, uh, not just a security guard, mind you. You know, spoiler alert, he doesn't last very long, but he was a great character. He was so odd. I wish he had a bigger part. And the creep itself, you know, obviously the movie's named Creep, but if we didn't talk about the creep, it's just, you know, as if he's not creepy enough, he has the rats to follow him and, and the rats, you know, rats in general just creep me out anyway. So I think the first 45 minutes of the film is just awesome, right? The suspense is awesome. It tails off a little bit in the middle. I guess it's interesting in a way because I think it, part of the movie starts to suffer because you see too much of the creep. But then again, that's actually what, makes the film really awesome too is because the creep is just odd think of like how odd angela bettis is in may and that's like how the creep is in 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 creep right so i, I think it was just a huge huge win right definitely some creepy scenes near the end where the creep preps for surgery it's just one of those things you have to see 
it's it's just frightening on just the mannerisms, the actions that he's taking. Yeah, uh, the final fight has some great scenes as well. You know, it, it, except for the scene where the guy kind of starts freaking out instead of just getting away. It was just kind of weird. You know, obviously you got a guy, they're getting away, and then you got a guy that randomly starts screaming. He's like, oh, I can't take this anymore. And then, of course, you know, you know what's going to happen. The bad guy's going to come up, right? So, Creep brings out a little gore. Not a ton of it, right? I think the ending has the most gore in the film. Uh, you do see a couple wounds that look really bad. But... You know, I think the majority of, of the ending is where you start to see a lot more and everything before is just building to it. You know, what I like about the film, I, it's weird because I complain about it sometimes too. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel the need to overly explain things with a ton of dialogue. One of the things I really liked is in this film, it doesn't also feel the need to just explain everything, right? There's subtle hints at the backstory, you know, through photos and, and not through this long drawn out story being told by one of the characters or a group of characters. Nothing bothers me more than that, right? Uh, I think of, uh, for some reason, Dr. Giggles is the one that comes up into my, into my head the most. Everybody enters the house and then they just start sitting there talking about, wait, isn't that the guy who was the son of this doctor? And hey, what happened to him? And then somebody else chimes in, you know, we don't know what happened to him. We heard that he was never found. In and it was just, it's like, all right, this is just, you know, this is obviously just bad writing. But in here, Creep doesn't feel the need to kind of spell it out. Leaves a little bit up to interpretation, which is pretty good. You know, again, the movie's called Creep, but the creep in it is awesome. He's freaky. Like, he's awkward quite often. It takes a while to see him, but when you do, you want to see him doing more odd things all the time. This is a movie I think could have used a sequel. I mean, you know, it's definitely this character needs to be, you know, in more movies. I think it was just a great character. I mean, at this point, you know, we're talking 16 years later. We haven't seen anything more about this, so it's not going to become a franchise at this point. And to be honest, I would hate to even see, like, a remake of this movie at this point. I mean, the movie holds up great. I'm not a big fan of really, you know, doing remakes unless there's a reason for it. But I think a movie like this is just the charm of it and the characters that are in there. You know, one of the weaknesses you have to say, and it's not something I truly hate, it's predictable at times, right? There, there's not a ton of weak spots in the film, though. It's it's really hard to have a movie where you, you're you never going to see what's coming up next, right? It's just, that just doesn't happen. We've all seen so many movies that you kind of know the routine and you've kind of seen, you know, this scenario play out way too many times. But... The reason it's in this deep cut series is this is one of those underrated gems that people need to get their hands on and watch. I know that people really dig it. So, yeah, I would love to see what people think about this movie. Unfortunately, since it shares the name with 2014's Creep, as soon as somebody says, hey, have you seen Creep? They're like, oh yeah, I seen that. That was like that two person movie, right? And it's, it's unfortunate and to be honest, all three of them are, are really good movies. And, you know, I'll just be clear that Creep and Creep 2 are better than this version of the Creep. But I think they're a lot more well-known. Uh, so it's hard to really put them into like a deep cut type of thing. Who knows, I may end up doing it. Maybe in a few years, uh, there won't be as much talk about Creep. You know, I, I will say I talk to a lot of horror folks that haven't seen Creep or Creep 2 yet, so, you know, maybe it is a little underrated in some rights. But definitely let me know what you think about Creep. Would, would love to hear your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. What do, you, what do you think about the movie in general? And let me know what other movies you would like to see in this deep cut series. Because, you know, as opposed to some of the other ones where we do awesome or awful or deep dives, deep cuts are... are you know, let's just say like deep dives are more for movies like The Exorcist, whereas deep cuts are more for movies like Creep. Right. All right. So 
that's it for this episode. Make sure you're smashing that like button for me. Make sure you're leaving some comments for me as well. Always love to get the feedback. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're setting up notifications. But most of all, make sure you keep it hard. <laughs>